This is News 25 with Missy Kohler. Local news with Deanna O'Donnell. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. This segment of the news is brought to you by Silver State Health, bringing quality medical and psychiatric care to Pahrump. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Good evening, I'm Missy Kohler. Today is Wednesday, October 14th, and you're watching News 20. Forward progress was made on drainage improvements at the Prompt Fairgrounds at the last BOCC meeting. Bids for the work were discussed and finally a contract was approved for the project. There were three contractors in the final consideration for the project. In the end, the contract was awarded to Patriot contractors who were from Las Vegas in the amount of $333,421. Commissioner Cox asked if there was a way to give preference to local contractor Wolfenstein. According to Nevada Code, Title 28 Public Works and Planning, NRS 338.1359, contract for public work, which estimated cost exceeds $250,000, must be awarded to the contractor who submits the best bid. The best bid may not be greater than 5% of the lowest bid. The difference between Patriot contractors and Wolfenstein was $65,547.63. Following a few members of the public that offered support for the local contractor, Brian Wolfenstein spoke on behalf of his company, saying he was overwhelmed with the support of the community. He said that following the rules of the bidding process, the bid from Wolfenstein is what it is, and he also thought that the bid from Patriot was a fair price. The commissioners thanked Wolfenstein for supporting the fair and ethical process by which the BOCC awards contracts. This project is funded from the Community Development Block Grant that was awarded in July of 2019. A Nevada National Security Site firefighter and his team are recognized for their efforts to fight Oregon wildfires. Brad Francis has the story. Nevada National Security Site firefighter Michael Porter led a Nevada search and rescue team deployed to Oregon in September. A firefighter for 26 years, he served as search team manager of the Nevada Task Force 1, which was recognized during a Clark County Commissioner's meeting. Porter has been a part of the Nevada Task Force 1 for 14 years and a canine handler for seven. He joined the NNSS fire and rescue team in May 2019 after retiring from the city of Henderson earlier that year. As for the team he led, Nevada Task Force One is one of 28 teams in FEMA's National Urban Search and Rescue Emergency Response System. Each Urban Search and Rescue Task Force includes 80 members specializing in search, rescue, medicine, hazardous materials, logistics, and planning, including technical specialists such as physicians, structural engineers, and canine search teams. The Nevada Task Force One team included three canines trained to detect human remains and six personnel. They worked with other teams from Utah, Florida, Colorado, and Arizona. Over the course of seven operational periods from September 12th through the 21st, the team covered the area of the fire in the Oregon towns of Talent, Phoenix, and Ashland. During that time, they evaluated more than 4,300 structures, searched 3,000 structures, and searched more than 1,600 vehicles. An illegal marijuana garden in southeast Carson City has led to the arrest of three people and the eradication of more than 500 mature marijuana plants. Brad Francis has more. Miguel Aguilera Angelo, Oscar Ortega Angelera, and Miriam Colin Vera are under arrest and facing drug charges after authorities eradicated an illegal marijuana garden in Carson City. Nevada's Department of Public Safety's Division of Investigations Trinet Narcotic Task Force seized 503 mature plants with a total weight of 850 pounds. Miguel Aguilera Angelo is facing a felony charge of trafficking marijuana. Oscar Ortega Aguilera is also facing a felony charge of trafficking marijuana, and Miriam Colonvera is facing a charge of possession of a controlled substance. All three are being held in the Carson City Jail. The Nevada Department of Public Safety's Division of Investigations participates in multi-jurisdictional efforts to identify and eradicate illegal marijuana grows in Nevada. Those task forces conduct a variety of narcotic investigations that focus on the illegal use, sales, distribution, trafficking, cultivation, or manufacture of controlled substances, as well as the abuse or diversion of prescription or pharmaceutical drugs. Many people in our area continue to be affected by the coronavirus pandemic. One of the biggest needs is food. So this Saturday, Quality Signs and Designs, KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio are organizing a food drive to help. 
Darby O'Donnell has the details. Quality Signs and Designs and KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio are having a food drive this weekend, Saturday, October 17th, um, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Walmart. The beneficiaries are going to be the VFW Food Bank to benefit local veterans and also the Prom High School Food Pantry. We're going to have a blue pop-up tent out front. We're going to have a whole bunch of shopping carts. Um, if you would like to come by and donate, we're also taking monetary donations. So the proceeds will be split exactly 50-50 between Prem Fly High School um, Food Pantry and also the VFW Food Bank. Food for Thought is currently not active because kids are not in school. So they're doing an alternative, which is the Prem Fly High School Food Pantry. And if people need to get food from the food pantry, the Prem Fly High School kids can do that? Yes, there's actually going to be representatives there that people can talk to if they like to do that. And if you are in need of food and you go to Prompt by High School, you can just talk to the front office and go shopping. Out. Yes, talk to your teachers or your administrators and they can definitely help you out with that. Thanks, Darby. Coming up after the break, more News 25, so stick around. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by PNP Property Management. Knowledge, experience, communication, and trust. Call Cynthia at 775-727-4444. Optum Care Network of Nevada, offering Medicare Advantage members more than 3,000 primary and specialty care providers throughout the state. Happy to have you with us tonight. Social Security benefits will increase next year. Two major U.S. banks report greater than expected revenues, and Delta Airlines reports a net loss of more than $5 billion. Angela Miles reports. Tapping our news, the cost of living increase for Americans receiving their Social Security will be 1.3% higher next year. The average cost of living adjustment since 2010 has been 1.4%. Turning to earnings, JP Morgan hauled in $29.94 billion in revenue, outpacing estimates of $28.63 billion. The banking giant has stashed away $611 million as a cushion to cover loan losses. That number is far below expectations. Citigroup posted revenue of $17.3 billion. That was slightly better than predicted. Delta Airlines reports a massive net loss of $5.38 billion. However, the CEO says passenger travel is on the rise and expects the airline to recover by next spring. Boeing lost another three orders for its grounded 737 MAX. Boeing delivered 11 jets during the entire month of September. A brush fire has led to an arson arrest of a prompt man. Here's what happened. On September 15th, a Nye County Sheriff's deputy was dispatched to respond to a report of a brush fire in the desert area south of East State Street and west of Oyster Street. When the deputy arrived, he observed a number of discarded items and pieces of lumber that were on fire, as well as a metal can commonly used to store chemicals. It was later learned that it contained a silicone-based gel. A male, identified as Tony Patton, was located just 50 yards south of the fire, lying on a mattress under a sheet, naked. Patton allegedly stated that he had set the items on fire because he wanted to get rid of them. Witnesses described hearing an explosion, followed by the fire, and a nude man walking away from the fire. According to the declaration of arrest, it was determined through field interviews with Patton and other witnesses that Patton did willfully set the fire to the timber, shrubbery, and flammable material. Patton was taken into custody for third-degree arson and transported to Nye County Detention Center without incident. The Retired Senior Volunteer Program, or RSVP, serves seniors across the country, offering programs to aid its clients with day-to-day -day needs. RSVP in Pahrump is looking for volunteers, and they even have some paid positions available. Tanya Brum tells us more about this great program. And the goal is for seniors to help other seniors. So our predominant uh, market base, uh, our, our client base, are senior citizens and the disabled, where we try to provide services to them. We have homemakers. We have people with respite when you have somebody who's real ill and the caretaker needs to get away. That's become an issue, but we're still finding a way to make it work. We have transportation where we take people shopping, we take them to the doctor, uh, we take them to run errands. And now again, because of the pandemic, we're actually doing the errand running for them. And then we have homemakers. And that's kind of where I'm at, at 
crossroads because I only have two homemakers right now, and that's what we're looking for is more people. And that actually pays. It's $10 an hour. It's just part-time. We look, we hope to get older seniors, not older seniors, but seniors who are still able to get around and do things to do it in just to kind of help them supplement their income. But we are taking younger people who are reliable and that and who are reliable and who can pass an extensive background check because that's very important. And so, um, so that's a couple uh, job opportunities, but also you, there's a stipend for some of the drivers, right? This, they get their uh, travel time. They get their uh, mileage. So they're reimbursed for mileage, and, which is very handy. I was a volunteer driver beforehand and what I love the most is how many friends I made because you're taking them to the market, taking them to the bank, taking them into Vegas to their medical uh, things and you really get to know people and it was really fun. Respite caregivers are also get a stipend. Um, everybody else gets, my, like anybody who's doing um, companionship, which is really important. It was never so important as it is right now as companionship that's one area where I have a lot of my volunteers are companions, and they get their mileage, so how, wherever they have to go. And then my homemakers are paid. So there's, And the homemaker is, uh, also works as a companion because they're in the person's home, they're spending time with them, they're chatting. All of my volunteers must wear masks. They must wear gloves when they're working. They have to be very cognizant of maintaining a safe distance. Uh, we, we follow CDC guidelines explicitly. So how can people find out more? They can call me. That's the best way to find out. It, my phone number is 702-845-4748. Halloween is a great time to dust off a fabulous mask, but not all masks are created equal, especially when it comes to COVID-19. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Kristen England says it's important to remember only certain masks are proven effective in reducing coronavirus spread. We know that cloth masks that have two layers of cloth are the best way to protect yourself when you're out trick-or-treating. So try to incorporate that as part of your costume. Try to find some cloth that uh, matches your costume and make your own masks. Surgical and cloth masks are often worn to help prevent COVID-19. Research suggests both types of masks are a good way to reduce expelled droplets. When it comes to cloth masks, though, Dr. England says one layer of cloth is okay, but two layers will provide better protection. It's also important to remember that a mask needs to be worn over your mouth and nose to be most effective against coronavirus. And if you're thinking about layering masks on Halloween, don't bother doubling up. To have a mask on that is that we know that's protective uh, against transmitting COVID and then to try and put another costume mask over the top of it it's probably not going to be an easy fit it's going to be difficult to try to breathe in and it's just going to cut down on the amount of fun that you're trying to have on trick-or-treat so let's stick with the cloth masks Dr. England says everyone should wear a mask even if they don't have symptoms because some people with COVID-19 are asymptomatic but still contagious we have more News 25 coming up in just a few. Stay with us. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. We have some really funny events coming up that we could use your help on. For instance, Halloween is just around the corner and volunteers are needed for our trunk or treat event happening on October 31st from 5 to 8 p.m. on Betty Loop. That's just off of Highway 160 and Betty Avenue right near Home Depot. We need volunteers who are willing to purchase candy or donate money for us to buy candy and then come park your car and you put up your trunk and hand out some candy to the kids. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be safe trick-or-treating for the kids as everyone will be wearing masks and gloves and will be socially distanced. So write that on your calendar, trunk or treat, October 31st, 5 to 8 p.m. on Betty Loop. And another fun event we've got coming up too is working with Simply Divine Salon. 
Do you know someone who's kind of had a rough time through all of this pandemic stuff? I think we all know that person. Somebody who maybe they lost their job or they lost income, haven't been able to afford to get a nice haircut, could just use some uplifting, something that makes her feel good. Well, nominate that lady. Let us know who she is. Tell us a little bit about her. We want to know why you think she would absolutely love to have a makeover. We're talking hair and nails and pedicure. Just email that to us at KPVM, and uh, we'll be making a winning drawing by the end of the month. Thanks so much to Simply Divine for joining us in that. Are you looking for a new furry friend? Well, we might just have the perfect kitty for you. Darby O'Donnell introduces us to Shaq. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Shaq. Shaq is a one-year-old domestic short hair, all black kitty. He is gorgeous and chunky, which is my favorite type of cat. He has beautiful green eyes. He is a very large cat, um, but he's super sweet. He actually is one of the free roaming cats, so he gets along well with other cats. Um, and he just has a very cute little personality. Um, if you want to come and see Shaq or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, give them a call, 775-751-7020. You can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society or stop on by. They're on Siri Lane behind the Nye County Courthouse. Oh, he's so sweet. Hi, kitty. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler from Channel 25 KPVM News. We're on location here just off Highway 372. This is Simply Divine. They're great sponsors of a project we've got going. It's called Project COVID-19. And what you do is you uh, send a little note to news at KPVM 25. Dot TV. You tell us about a special person in your life, a lady specifically, that could use a little sprucing up and cheering up after all this COVID-19 uh, madness we've been going through. Uh, coming back to life, it's a great way to do it. Get yourself a little makeover. So they'll do your nails, they'll do your hair, they'll make your lady feel good. It's news at kpvm25.tv. And uh, we'll be uh, a couple winners at, throughout the month. you got to nominate before the end of October. So do that and uh, treat someone special in your life a little bit more special. There you go. Uh, we'll be back with all the weather and all kinds of news when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Yes, I got a haircut. It's all under control. All right. And so is the weather. In fact, up in Fernley, 79 degrees was your high today, 41 for a low. In Fallon, uh, similar uh, temperature, 79 degrees and 39 for a low. Carson City, just a shade off there, Mark. 80 degrees for a high today and 39 for a low. And that's getting kind of a little frosty at night. Might want to pull a sweater. Tonopah, you saw 78 for a high. 41 was your low. And out in Goldfield, smoking all the way up to 81 degrees. 41 for your low tonight in Beatty, uh, all the way to 92. And it's probably just off the mark as we head towards uh, sunset. And your low tonight will be 57 as you get into the evening. All the way out in Amargosa, 97 degrees, not too bad. 64, a low tonight. And in Las Vegas, the big winners are doing it at 95 degrees with a 66 degree low. Death Valley, you're a little bit hotter tonight. What's going on out there in Death Valley? Saw a sunshiny day, 105 degrees was your high today. 73, for a low. And as we look at the local temperatures here in Pahrump, 94 degrees is your temperature currently. 95 degrees was your high. Uh, winds out of the west, northwest at nine miles per hour. Humidity pretty dry, 9%. And the sunrise this morning was at 6.50 a.m. It will set tonight at 6.08 p.m. And so we had a few more minutes of night to enjoy. A low tonight of 59 degrees. That feels pretty good out on the deck. The winds out of the east, northeast to 5 miles an hour and the humidity at just 19%. We'll see some clouds towards morning, but that's all right. Hey, check it out. We're sneaking up on the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. What's the big story here? Not a big story, just uh, a kind of a trend you can notice. Uh, 92 degrees is our... High Thursday, sneaking down to 89 and 90 over the weekend, all the way down to 82 by Wednesday. So we're going to be degrading on our highs uh, to the tune of about 10 degrees over the next seven days. And the lows will follow, uh, but not as aggressively. 57 for 
a low Thursday all the way down to 51 on Wednesday. So we'll lose about five degrees on the on the low side. But that's pretty pleasant fall weather here in Knight County. And we're loving it. Yes, it's feeling good. All right, back to the desk. It's Missy Kohler. Thanks. Have a good night.